Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. As you can see, I've, I've got a different brand now. I'll probably be carrying this brand throughout the uh, throughout out the election series aspect of it. And so through May, I will be carrying this up. In fact, beyond that, in fact, through November. I mean, uh, we've got issues on the table here. We've got an election year. We've got some very serious issues on the table, folks. We've got to respond to them and all. And so that's what, I, that's what the Oregon Voters Digest is going to be doing uh, here between now and that particular time. In some, in some cases, you'll see me as a, as, a, as a candidate running for mayor of the city of Portland, and others, you will be seeing me as a host of uh, the or Oregon Voters Digest. That's where I'm sitting here right now. Well, guess what? Tonight, we're going to be talking about the Oregon Voters Digest, and I'm going to be your host tonight. And we're going to be entertained, we, we're going to be entertained today by someone who's running for uh, county commissioner, position uh, number three, district number, in district three. Uh, you've seen this young lady before. Her name is Glendora Claybrooks. And the reason why she's kind of important, as you know, this is the metro area here, the tri-county area. Washington County tends to abut uh, Multnomah County or the city of Portland. And then we got Clackamas County. So it's kind of, a, it's kind of important to kind of get a sense of uh, dealing with some of the issues are, are relevant, if you will, when you're dealing in these three-county areas. Glendora has been around. You suspect that you've seen her on my show before. She's, she's been here before. She's She's with another organization. We're not, we're not worried about dealing with that right now. She's got her hands full, just basically wanting to actually running for office. And, you know, and I, I've got to give you a lot of respect uh, for, um, uh, for doing this, Glendora, because not too many people would like to run for office. But I could always say that your definition falls in that one of those two categories. Cause in, but in this case, you're wearing both hats. What I mean by that, uh, issues, issues are issues are issues. And everybody's got issues. And we, a lot of times we, we, we don't prioritize them, but we got issues. And that's really what the election is all about. And you've got one of two options. You're going you're gonna to be able to vote or you can run for office. And in this particular case, we got, uh, we got an individual with us here that's got both. She, I know she's going to vote and, and, and she's running for office. So we want to thank you for that, okay? And thank for those you, of you who are, who are looking at us right at this point in time, remember that. So when you start objecting about people, what you hear, and this, that, and the other, there might be four or five candidates. Hey, look here, just focus on your issue and try to find a candidate that can relate to them. And if, you, if that's the candidate you so choose and that, and that person relates to your issue, then vote for that person. You know what I'm saying? Right up front. If not, then you got to talk to all five candidates if you got five candidates running to get it across to them. And sometimes you can do that through uh, neighborhood associations or other groups or whatever. But the bottom line, at the same time, it always comes down. There's no sense in arguing. You can vote. That means you got to be registered to vote. You got to be legit. And or you can run for office. And trust me, that's, that's our process here. And it's a real good one, and it works, okay? Well, look, let's get right into your, your, your election. I know you've got some issues, and, and, I, and that's one of the reasons why I've got you here. Uh, your, your background sort of dictates to an issue that, uh, that, that's relative because it's a, it's a national issue. It's a world issue, for that matter. Uh, we, we're, we're in the midst of drugs. You hear it all the time about, uh, uh, not necessarily Maryland, but the heroin. Heroin is, is very relevant right now all over the country, but in our country, it's really taking hold. And here in the, in the metropolitan area, in fact, through the state of Oregon, we've got some issues with heroin. And that, that's a huge issue as in itself. But before we go into that real quick, just briefly, because I, I know I've introduced you before, but Glendora, yourself for a minute, just for a minute. From yes. here, from, you live oh. in Washington County, right? Yes, you yes, live I, li I live in Washington County. And just briefly, you got kids? And I have three kids. And you're working hard and every day. And I'm working hard. Every day, and right? I'm a community activist. Yeah, that's right, and and but you're going, to, you're going to school. And I'm going to school. Going to school, and I was excited about your school thing and jump right over in because we want to get into the other piece. You're going to school, you, you, you're working on your doctoral degree, right? Yes, I'm working on my okay. doctoral degree. And your thesis is going to be on what again? You were Health telling? disparities Health among disparities. black African Americans. Black African American Americans, but bottom line, again, it's, it's inclusive of everybody. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But you're focusing on that particular one. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. That's a good. That's a good deal. All right then. Okay. Now let's get down to. Uh, okay. So you're knocking on doors and 
Right. I'm Are knocking on doors. Them? I'm passing out information. Yep. I'm talking yep. to people in yep. the community. Yep. I'm letting them know who yep. I am, yep. what I want to yep. do, that yep. I identify with their yep. issues. Yep. And we talk about things such as land use, the transportation, and Everything. the human and health services. Everybody got issues. Because everybody has everybody issues. issues. Right, right, right. And health uh, not only begins with physical health, it right. begins at birth and then it uh, ends at death. Right, and right, that right, is the right, last right. stage of our health. Right. So uh, Is we're... this your first time running? Probably? Yes, this is first my time first running. time running. Yeah. And you first notice when I, when I introduced the show, I talked about the fact that Everybody has issues, right? Yeah, everybody the has moment issues. You, the moment you put your name down and say, I'm running for office, your phone starts ringing. Absolutely. I want you to know about this and this. About, you get about hit about 50 different issues. Yes. And you say, well, I, don't, I only know about two of the 50 that call me, <laughs> right? But still, yes. people got concerns. People have concerns, And that's why I yes. shared with the, with the viewing audience that if you put it in that context from the standpoint, if you don't know, rather than saying, well, I'll try to find out because no, you've got to run for office. Yes. And you've got to have an issue that's relevant as much as you can for that that group for that particular area and so you need the time to really get down to the folks and whatever Absolutely. but you can share with the other folks hey by the way yes i might get through it but the bottom line is that you do have two options here yes I mean, if you're right if you have if you haven't voted you make sure i'm sure you've got your cards right there that's right you can, out, you can fill these card out and get get the vote right. on the other hand if you're so passionate about your issue <laughs> you can file the run for office but that day's gone right that day's gone, that day's gone. <laughs> so now it's just a vote type yes, thing right just a vote okay yes. so let's get down to well first of all, i want to talk about your thesis you, you said you were you're going to be focusing in in this one area yes i'm focusing on the health disparities and how it impacts uh, black mm -hmm. african americans right. in the united okay. states so uh one thing uh one people uh, one place. Mm -hmm. So we need to hone in on what is it that uh, constantly seems to be impacting the people of color that we can't uh, seem to resolve. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, one thing that, that, I, that I'm somewhat familiar with when you start talking, I'm, I'm not that many, but sickle cell, you know, look like yes. you hear a lot about sickle cell aspect of it. Can you talk a little bit about that in terms of its origin and where is it at this point in time? Is it is it something that we've resolved among uh, supposedly predominantly black black Americans, right? Uh, absolutely, cell. it's okay. mostly um, seen in um, black African Americans, okay. and it is a genetic inherited disease, and it is uh, terminal. However, though there the, there's treatment that can um, help maintain the disease, mm -hmm. but you have flare-ups, mm -hmm. and so that is uh, something that we need to look at a cure uh, for that. And so that's going to take a lot of study. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a lot of money. So we need to look into those issues. Um, however, the health disparities that we are often seeing are easily treatable, such as diabetes. Mm. These are things that are can be maintained once they are also genetic, but we can maintain. There, there's evidence that um, what we need to do to mm. address these issues and to um, do uh, focus more on preventative care and educate um, the population who are more prone to diabetes and heart attacks and strokes because diabetes will bring those other issues to, uh, bear. to bear, yes. Really? And so, yeah, so we have to educate our people and the community in what measures and actions and behaviors they need to uh, focus on in order to help themselves mm. uh, prevent and sustain or maintain mm -hmm. the... Um, the the, uh, the disease so that it doesn't uh, lead into premature death. I see, I see. Okay, now let's get into the, the some other areas here with you with reference to you running for this position and the fact that you've got a you got a health background. I think that's a very unique issue. And then I also found out that you'll probably be once elected, you'll be the only commissioner on board that will have had that background 
And then I think that's a that's a benefit because from the county standpoint, because now when you start talking about budgetary situations and whatever, you know, what do you budget and whatever, and prioritizing the issues that are relevant in that particular county, right? Am I right? Yes, that's you know, right. Now we'll have somebody on there to sit down and have some discussion as opposed to somebody sitting in the stand saying, well, all you have to do is buy so many pills, <laughs> <laughs> right? And then hand them yes, out. Yes. Like, for instance, that's what I've been wanting to talk to you about, and that is the, the hypodermic needle. And, and what I mean by that is getting back to this point about uh, the, the, the heavy focus right now, especially on heroin. Heroin is a major, major problem in the country, in the state, and actually in your county aspect of it. And one of the processes that I'm familiar with, and I'm, doing, I'm, I'm talking this way so, you, so then you can give some response, I'm a small business owner, and uh, I know it's an issue uh, where I'm at because I, I, sometimes when I'm sweeping out on the, on the deck and in the front of the, the business, I'm picking up needles. Well, I'm sweeping needles, you know what I mean? And then you try to put them in a bag and you try to call someone to come pick them up because I don't like the idea of putting them in the, uh, in the dumpster because I used to work for a, a solid waste, and I was a recycling specialist, and I knew about I knew about the recycling plant, and people were sorting through this, that, and the other, and all of a sudden, they come across a needle and they stick themselves, mm -hmm. and then everybody rushes them over to the hospital and whatever, and it caused some big, big problems, and and now today, I'm not working for that recycling plant, but I'm still seeing the needles in this, that, and the other, and and then I at one point in time I stopped one of the homeless folks who had them. If I get a bag of them, and I asked him, well, what are you doing with these?" He said, "Well, I'm going to sell them because I need a, I got to get me some, something to eat." And he's got a bag of needles, and these are used needles. And I said, "What?" And then I asked, him, "Where do you get these needles?" Well, I get them for free. And he said, "You're going to be selling them to someone to get?" Yes, because they 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 shoot up with these needles. And you know he naturally went say, "Well, they give us to them because you know we we we." Uh, we might uh, be catching HIV or this, that, and the other. Right. Well, well, if you already got the HIV on the needle, <laughs> and you're shooting in, you're shooting heroin on your own. I mean, that's a problem. Yes, that's a talk problem. to me. Talk to me about that. Those needles. That's a problem, and I think. When did, they, when um, did we get to that? What was the rationale? The, to start with. Uh, d uh, we were looking for uh, ways to help eliminate the transition of mm -hmm. the HIV uh, virus, and one of the ways to do that was to provide dispensing clean needles mm -hmm. to the users, so they would not have to resort to uh, using used needles. Mm -hmm and transmitting the disease. So um, as a result, uh, the needles were new, unused needles were, the, a program was set aside to dispense new, unused needles to uh, eliminate and reduce the uh, contraction of HIV and hepatitis and other diseases that come from needle sharing. So I think uh, what we need to do, if people are, are selling those, I think we need to put in some sort of, uh, we need to study uh, the issue to see what we can do to uh, collect the used needles from uh, the public uh, uh, environment yeah, so that yeah. children or other uh, people or law enforcement will not officers, be yes, or handling subjected, folks or whatever. Yes, subjected. Or, you know, and, you know, that's, that's a, it's a terrible situation, and, and I don't see an answer right now. And so well, what, what are we going to do? Well, we need to uh, take a hard look. You said about dispensers, Yes, please. we need to take a hard look. And what I did, um, what, what I do believe that would work is for um, there to be um, needle disposal uh, uh, areas or something entities or containers or something. yes containers Stores where you can discard the used needles yeah. so the, the the addicts when they're done they can just discard the used needles or and so that would help eliminate the uh, the disposal of them uh, on the grounds and in, in our communities you know you know I, I, I hate to be so facetious about this piece but you know, maybe a way of, of making sure that uh, those those needles are exposed, uh, disposed of correctly. Maybe they, if they're going to shoot up, let them shoot up at the clinic. Clinic. <laughs> well, I mean, I hate to put it that way, but let them shoot up right then. Then you can dispose of the needle. But then the other thing is that you'll know who's shooting the heroin, 
and you'll know, then you can ask them the question, where are you getting the heroin? I mean... Well, see, those are the kinds of things that uh, addicts are not going to uh, feel comfortable answering because it uh, reflects, uh, it, it gets other people into uh, legal uh, ramifications, into legal uh, issues, and people will be... Uh, uh, held accountable, so they're not g g gonna want to risk exposing or um, their supplier or anyone else uh, that they uh, interact with in uh, attaining those drugs. So, and we cannot just put them in that sort of a position, whereas mm -hmm. they're gonna be ratting out, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. people uh, who are engaging in supplying them with the drugs. So there's a lot of things to be considered there. So uh, always it's not as easy and it's not as simple as it appears to be. Mm -hmm. But certainly if we pay attention to this population and what we can do to uh, reduce the uh, discarding of the used needles as to prevent uh, transmission of the disease and at the same time uh, uh, help the people who are using to uh, with services whereby they can be weaned off these uh, drugs. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have to look into. Yeah, How can we that. best yeah. provide services? Yeah. And it usually comes down to the budget. Mm -hmm. There's always, always that budget. It, yes, it's always the budget. The so bottom much line. money to buy the buy the needles. Absolutely. <laughs> so much money to, for the people to buy to hand out the needles. Absolutely. Right? So much it's, money to this get it once it's deposited and taken back so much money for health care I mean it goes on and on and on right? absolutely and that's where the county commissioners can come in at overseeing whether or not the Department of Human and Health Services mm -hmm. have uh, enough uh, uh, funds whereby they can provide meaningful services mm -hmm. to a population of people that not only addresses the addictions but also addresses the mental health mm -hmm. uh, issues because there's not enough available services provided to treat people with these conditions mm -hmm. and so um, th we fall short of uh, using the programs to the extent for which they were designed oh, yeah. to be productive mm -hmm. in reducing the kind of statistical outcomes that we see taking place among the population of people who are on the medical health mm -hmm. services and are um, disabled, uh, d having de developmental dis uh, mm -hmm. disabilities, meaning from the time they are children, uh, any developmental illness that happened before the age of 18. Mm -hmm. And then we have the elderly, and then we we have so many other services such as affordable housing all of these things are related to health issues mm. right now we're dealing with whether or not inclusionary zoning will address some of the homelessness mm. in our mm. community yeah, so yeah. these are other things that we are looking into that county commissioners are responsible for and it's these kinds of things that have not been working for people that I feel like I'm a product of because um, in my county when people People live in a um, subsidized housing unit. Mm -hmm. The the uh, the uh, the the income is raised according to the county's income and not the income of household uh, of individuals per household. Mm. So it does not matter whether you are on um, subsidized or um, fixed income. When they examine the income for the entire county, mm -hmm. that is what I am told. They use as a reference. Uh, absolutely, okay. and increases the rent and makes it uh, unaffordable for those that are living there on a fixed income, and they're soon pushed out onto the streets. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you make a good point there because, that, as you know, the whole issue of homelessness is, is, is a big issue right now. And uh, here in the Portland area, they, I guess they reacted by, at least for a short term. You know, they made deals, but they're for a short term. And, and right up front with you is going to probably be right in the midst of the summer, too. Yes. And that's when they really, really have problems. You know what I mean? Because everything's going to be open and this, that, and the other. And that's a very, very major, major concern. What's going to happen after the fact? You know what I'm saying? Yes. And then, you know, you're going to need more dollars, if you will. And uh, that's going to be a toughie. But one of the points I would like to bring up in regards to the whole issue with the needles aspect of it, well, at least for the next three months, 
uh, supposedly all of the homeless are going to be housed. They're going to have a place to stay. So that means you're going to be able to take a, get a record of them, who they are, and their Social Security, you know, all kinds of deal, and if they need any other service. But the fact of it is you're going to have a controlled environment. Well, a lot of those folks use heroin. They do heroin. Are they going to allow these folks to, to shoot up in the, in, the, in the housing units that are going to be provided, to, uh, trying to help them out, do you think? Well, no, Is that I, a good idea or what? I think perhaps it may be disingenuous to uh, say that uh, the concern only uh, rests with the people that are uh, addicts because most people that are homeless are not addicts. But um, because but of addictions... You would agree. Yeah, I mean, there are too many... I think the the gist of the population, though, that are homeless are now um, within the last twenty years have become homeless, especially within the last uh, yeah, fifteen we, years, the deal, yeah. become homeless because yeah. of lack up. of uh, Job. employment and increasing constant yeah. increases Stress. in rent, and because yeah. the demand is great, because uh, due to lack of employment. Not a lot of people are buying homes, mm -hmm. so the rent increases based on supply and demand. So now uh, the people that were once able to sustain themselves uh, in living quarters are no longer mm -hmm. because they are not adequately employed and they're Therefore, they don't have the income to uh, keep them uh, stationary. Okay. And as well as the uh, land use and how the lands are uh, are used in order to build affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, you got a lot of it's private uh, yeah. properties without uh, the uh, sufficient measures for um, including um, housing that's affordable. Okay. Uh, well, again, that, that, that last piece I would share in regards to the, the housing aspect of it and, and the cost that we're talking about, uh, again, we talk about uh, uh, the rent's going to be increased to the voters, too, <laughs> because they've got to come up with the money, if you will, to provide these services. The only reason why I was trying to focus in on these, the, 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 the homeless people right now is because that's a big issue right that's now. That's a big issue. In, in, Port, in, in, Mo in Mitch County area, Portland, Multnomah County, the surrounding area, Washington County, and whatever. But I thought maybe it would be a good place to start on your needle piece because you got a controlled environment. So yes. if you're giving them the needle, they can put, if you will, a container of some sort. Then they have to get through using them, they can put them in a the container. I don't like the idea to a certain degree because it looks like to me it's, it's kind of re reinforcing, if you will, uh, yeah, reinforcing the fact that it's okay to use, to, 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 to do hair, you know what I mean, by giving, helping them out to continue being on the deal. But that's another subject matter that I'm sure you'll be able to handle. Yes. Uh, <laughs> You're doing your deliberations, right? Yes. Okay. But it's a subject. It is a subject and, matter. It is a concern. However, I think, uh, again, um, we need to realize that uh, that just a piece of that puzzle. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. not the whole picture. But it's on your so mind. I don't want people to think it's only the homeless uh, 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 addicts that are homeless. Right, that right. is not so. Yeah, right, yes, right, but right, right. And it's, uh, with regard to addressing the best uh, measures to reduce exposure of used needles on the street, yeah. yes, that we need to take a look right, at right, that right, if right, it right. becomes a huge issue, which it has uh, throughout our communities. Well, we're so, going to be relying on you because we're in the Tri County area. I don't know of any. Any kind of commission that I know of to date, on Multnomah County especially, has a anybody with, with your ex, with your type of expertise. No. And so we're going to use you quite a bit. <laughs> we're going we're to have you on the show, and hopefully you will come back with, and see whether or not you might be able to do a little research yes. to find out how they are handling these needles because it's a problem. Maybe yes. they, maybe they're already doing so. I don't know. Yes. But something needs to be done because it, to maybe to see what they got to talk to it because it does promote. As if to say, well, no problem with heroin because we're going to give you the needles. You got me? If they don't have the needle, they can't shoot up. Well, so. no, I, I think that uh, that is one thing to consider, but we just can't approach it with that mindset because then we are going to start excluding uh, people who don't fall under that category. So we're going to have to take a good look. Well, those folks, don't want, you, well, those folks don't want you to know. 
<laughs> that they're using heroin. They work well, in every day. They don't, day. but I, I think they that the needle day. supply to eliminate. They get the, them too. They probably get them too. Because you can get them for free. It's my understanding that you don't have to divulge your name or anything of that nature. You can't get used needles for they free. Work. You get on. You no, get no, I'm new, new ones. Yes, yeah. right. But I'm just talking about the people who are not homeless. See, <laughs> they're using. They're doing it too. See, so I'm just trying to figure out what do we do to get people off heroin. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And it's, 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 so well, we go, it, So it's going to be a pleasure having someone like you, and then maybe you can talk to your other county commissioners once you're elected and come up with, you know, just all get together and deal with the issue. Yes. You can chair that committee. I mean, it's it's a very major piece aspect of it on this deal. You got me? Yes. So it's going to be a pleasure doing that with you. But like I said, you got other issues that uh, I'm sure that you, you, you talked about the housing and all. And like I said, they, you're bombarded with all kinds of issues. Absolutely. People are calling you every day. They, they're going to be calling you more than that once you're elected to office. Yes. Right? You got yes. me? So it's quite a job. It's yes. quite a job. Well, so you ready for it? You, I am ready. I, this is why I ran. Uh, I, As I've said, I didn't choose it. It chose me. I accept it. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm happy that I did accept it because it is a challenge uh, no matter where we are uh, and what we're trying to resolve because one rule will not fit all. Yeah, right, so right, we got to right. see uh, and sometimes address it uh, geographically because different things happen in different uh, geographic areas of our right. uh, government. So uh, we're going to be taking a hard look at it, and I'm going to try and approach it from a facelift approach. Mm -hmm. You just don't go in and get a right. facelift. Well, you saying. examine the skin condition, I, I can, I, whether it's crow's feet or, you I know, so whatever that. it is. So we're going to go in, take <laughs> a hard, hard look, look and evaluate you. and assess and great. communicate with the businesses and our communities and great. and the the population our right. constituents to come up with a, a a resolution that can that will be beneficial okay. to the the to three the, entities okay. we well, you know the other thing I was going to ask you if it's possible I know that you sit on a committee or so that the governor the governor the sitting governor now Kate Brown governor Brown has put you on right yes and you happen to have Noah you think it might be possible to see what you might be able to get Kay to come on with you and the, re the rationale behind that maybe she can give us a little update in terms of where the state is at this point in time yes and kind of react to some of the concerns that you're going to share with her as to why we'd like to have her come on if you can yes. do that then we can have a little discussion and give the folks the opportunity in the state get a sense of where are we on the whole issue of needles that's that's a major concern yes and and what are the stats with reference to uh, where are the heavy users with heroin and this that and the other and what can we do as a public you know in, in regards to trying to combat this this deadly disease if you will which is a, is a major concern you think we might be able to put something like that together well i don't have direct uh hands-on with the with the governor right. there is a chain of command and so i can start with the director right. of the uh, right. medicaid advisory committee and go from there and if that's something that you would like to have happen i would happily work toward that yeah. to see if it's a possibility i appreciate but that. i can't promise that hey, that's okay <laughs> because in all due respect at the end of the day your budget will be impacted by <laughs> the governor right yeah because you guys are all employees once exactly. you get elected right yes. of the people and we want to solve the problem yes that's why we elect you all you yes know? and it's a nonpartisan position once uh, you get elected when position. you get elected you will be in a nonpartisan <laughs> position yes but, but so my point is that it is a major issue so i think it would be a, a benefit if you will to the public to know just where are we on the on the issue of heroin and needles in the state of Oregon. Yes. And if you can get her here, fine. If not that, at least have a conversation with her, and then maybe you can then come on and, and you can address that issue. Yes. One way or the other. One way or the other. She'll either be here <laughs> with you, we can have the discussion, or you will then just share what you got from her or as maybe, a result of the concerns. Perhaps she has a representative that she can uh, send to address those questions yeah. because she has people at each agency that take care of uh, certain things. So right, right, perhaps okay. she will send uh, one of those representatives to address those issues. Right. Well, you know, from, from, a, from a voting public like myself, I, I always tend to want to, you know, the person who I'm paying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paying the elected <laughs> official. Those are the ones that I should know. I realize there's a staffers, yes. but when it comes out of the elected official's mouth, then it, it means something. Yes. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to take anything away from the staffers. It's just let them have the discussion with the staffers. You know, sometimes they won't say the right thing, but with the person who's elected, you know, they're going to 
make sure that the staff is going to give them the right information. <laughs> yes. So they can share with the with the voting with, yes. the, with the public. Yes. That's a very important deal. So. And it's a important thing, but uh, we don't we don't just address the heroin addict issues and the needles and that kind of thing. We are um, a a committee that uh, is uh, formulated to um, analyze and assess the policies and practices of uh, the Oregon Health Authority for the Medicaid population. Okay. Those are the populations of people that they um, that they represent and provide uh, health plans for. So, well, that, like I say, you represent a lot of things. Yes. You know I, so, I, so I want to appreciate I appreciate that, and that's why we spent so much time on this because we're going to have you back on. You're yes. the only county commission that, like I said, is, is going to be in that arena. It's a very important arena, and I think both the electorate need to know, those who are running for office need to know that we have someone in Oregon here that's going to be dealing with some of these issues of concern, and they can call you, right? Absolutely. Okay, you got a phone number? Give them a sure, phone number. Sure, five zero three. Nine three five nine six nine zero. Okay, and you you'll deal with and anybody who wants to talk. It, with anyone who wants to talk, I and mean, if you would like to donate to my uh, campaign, please uh, sign on to well, the you website. Can't, you can't do that part. Oh, oh yeah, I yeah, see. Just give them the website. <laughs> sure, the website at electclaybrooks.org. There you go. Okay, good. It's been a pleasure, Rendora. And really appreciate that. You gave us some good information. Okay, fine? Thank you. All right, so get out there and go we'll knock on those doors some more, okay? Yes. We'll All right, do. good luck to you. Just Thank stay you. right where you are. Thanks okay, for having fine. me. Again, this has been Glendora K. Brook. We're going to take a short break and we'll get to our next guest. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks, to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, and hey, guess what? Again, this is election time, election time. How do we get to meet the potential leaders, if you will, who are going to be, will be our future leaders for at least the next two years, and in some cases, the next four years aspect of it. we got all sorts of folks that are vying, if you will, to be those spokespersons that are going to be representing us, the people, okay? And we got a lot of issues on the table. Well, in, in this, this particular interview, we'll be interviewing uh, an association that I've known for a number of years, has been around for a number of years. You've even seen the gentleman on the show. His name is Cal Henry. Uh, he represents the Oregon Assembly, uh, I'm sorry, Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs. For Black Affairs. For Black Affairs. For Black Affairs. Very unique. And he noticed that my, when I had that first interview, that that person uh, uh, happened to be a person of color, a black person, black African American. But the fact of the matter is, she happens to be very articulate in the issue of mental illness and, and bow. So if you want to see some more folks, guess what? You can go on Oregon, Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs. And he does, he does quite a job, and, and it's, a, it's a way to kind of hobnob with, with folks, uh, folks who are running for office and, and, and trying to get folks who are not as familiar with, with issues of African Americans. They can come and, and deal with that, and this, that, and the other, and they debate, and they talk, and it's just a, it's just a good, good environment. And it's going to be held here in the, in the metropolitan area, and, and it's, he always does that. And uh, I know he's a very, very busy person, almost comparable to me, <laughs> but he's, he, he's got a, quite a task on his head. And he's been doing this, how many years do you have, Cal? Well, this would be the, we, we've been doing this in 1977. 1977, gee whiz. And you never ran for office. Well, I guess I can see I, I, why I, you haven't. No, I ran for office in Benton County, though, where I lived. How, how long was this ago, about? Oh, during 1990, I ran. 1990? Yeah. 
and oh, I lost wow. by 300 votes. Well, no, you didn't. You got elected to this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I but, think this is a, no. I mean, it's a very important piece. Well, I, I want to make sure that you folks know that. Well, it has always been an important piece. The Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs is it, it, it's 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 primary uh, purpose is to build a better Oregon for the black community. We also know whatever we do to improve the status of blacks in Oregon, benefit all of Oregon. Yeah, right, right, See, right, right. And, I, and then I think people have come to re realize that more and more as they have gotten to know more about the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs. Right. Well, you know, the point I want to make, and we're going to go in this, and I think it's very important, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I have Cal on the show is that, you know, often we have the, we tend to to tend to identify with, with uh, Martin Luther King's day. Rightfully so, no yes, problem. Sir. He was a very, very powerful leader, very powerful person, and he meant, he meant a lot to this country. And that's why we celebrate on an ongoing basis. But we've always kind of identified that one day in many cases, or if not that, you got Black History Month too, we do that piece. But this particular situation is on an annual basis. You're meeting constantly, you're, you're constantly talking about issues, you're responding to issues that are, are current, issues that, I'm, I'm just saying, so this is a, it, my point is that you're doing quite a job. You know, a lot of folks don't realize what this uh, program is all about. Well, uh, what well, else do you do? Well, the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs is its prime purpose is to get blacks involved into mm -hmm. all levels of, of government, black Americans involved. Okay. And, and, and we use the term black Americans for mm -hmm. a reason. Okay. And that reason is to recognize those individuals who came along since we came, since our foreparents, our foreparents came to the show of America, mm -hmm. and deal with the issues that they have faced. We we recognize that they went through all sorts of uh, 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 tra uh, tra tra tragedies and hideous situations, mm -hmm. and to to honor them, I feel that uh, by me identifying myself as Black American, I'm saying to them that I. I really appreciate what you have done, and what you have also done is show us that the strength of a people. Yeah, right. See, the, the people who always call us all sorts of different names, mm -hmm. and that's a big issue to a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I was talking with some students uh, uh, Friday, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the students were, asked them, how do you identify yourself? And they couldn't come up to say black in their own turn. Mm -hmm. But we know that uh, if you don't identify with your own struggle, not very many other people are going to identify it for you. Mm -hmm. They will use you and to be able to achieve their goals mm -hmm. rather than look at the goals that we have. The Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs has tried to get blacks involved in the political arena. Mm -hmm. When I came to Oregon, the, the voice of our black Oregonians were almost nil. Now, there's something here. Don't get mm -hmm. me wrong. But at the same time, we were not looking at the political reality that we could play mm -hmm. in, in, in this country, in this state. And many of us only function in terms of being, uh, or from the standpoint of a parental place. You, you, you have to have a white to select and validate the black right, before right. the black could speak. Right. And uh, as we got involved, more and more people began to recognize that blacks do have a voice that need to be heard. Mm -hmm. And uh, you had a, 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 a candidate here yes. who recognized Lindor. that whole yeah. point. She was a, yeah. she's, yes, she's she's a member of the organization. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm a member. Uh, I mean, all due respect, yeah, yes. Yeah. And and see, I get some of my points in regards to that yeah. to make sure that I recognize that there are issues that are still relevant. Yes. And, and that's important. That's and, important. And see, and see sometimes people run away from that yeah. rather than begin to embrace it. And I know we got a lot of struggles going on in our society today mm -hmm. that we necessarily need to talk about, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we don't. And, and uh, we ha sometimes have to go from the genesis mm -hmm. of some things. Uh, one of the things that the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs is dealing with is dealing with state-sanctioned discrimination against mm -hmm. Black Americans. Mm -hmm. Now that benefits everybody, or it also hurt everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but a lot of times, people don't know where the discrimination really started mm -hmm. from. But did you, do you see progression, though? Oh, I mean, well, there, there are some changes. There have been some changes, right? But we're talking about things. That's, okay. a, that's yeah, a progression yeah, in yeah, anyway. So. Yes. Yeah, see, people yes. think by talking about right, it, right. we shouldn't talk about right, it. Right, 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 right. See, uh, now people get upset with the use of the term Black uh, Life Matters yeah. without understanding what they're really doing. Mm -hmm. Now, and sometimes 
they let somebody else define what they're doing. Mm -hmm. See, it's more than just dealing with the police. See, mm -hmm. it's exposing all that state sanctioned discrimination that we've had over the years to face. See, when I, you know, when I read about Oregon history, Oregon said, you and I couldn't be here. Hmm. And anybody who brought us here were punished too. Hmm. That means white people who brought us here were punished. Today. Oh, not, not, not today. But they're punished in I mean, certain some, ways. Yeah, yeah, okay. 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 See, okay. But we're talking about it, though. Yeah, yeah, but we got to talk about it and understand why we necessarily need to talk mm -hmm, about it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we are, uh, the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs has asked the university and college president to do is help black American students understand politics and process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of times people think the politics is running only running for office without understanding is much more than that. Oh, yeah. See, and, if you and, don't understand the issues. Yeah, yeah. It, yes. And, 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 if, and if you don't know the process mm -hmm. to get those issues solved, yeah. and then if you're not willing to get involved to work with people to be able to get in the position to help solve those but issues. But, tell me this now. I mean, you know, what about our education system? You know, we've, we've, got, we've, got, we've, got, we've got classes, we've got studies, and we've got... I mean, you know, what? In fact, right off the bat, and you've been there before. I was going to ask you. I'm going to ask you right off the bat. We've got our, uh, our, our, our educational system. You know what I'm saying? Our formative years, grade one through twelve. Are they being? Are these concerns being taught now in the in the schools? Well, I, I, the 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 black in the classroom. Is it in the classroom? No, no, they're not. They're not still in the classroom. No. Why not is that the, so? That's well, well, let's give an update. Well, the point. The I know point you started of, out way back when, but not well. Well, we well, 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 the point of it is, is that if parents are not looking at how their children are taught and developed to be able to move forward, okay, then whatever they are taught tend to st stay in that realm of keeping uh, the individual in an inferior position in terms of understanding what is happening. One of the things I've said over and over, uh, when I look at the people who are in the Oregon State Institution down there, mm -hmm. many of those young black people down there came out of the Portland public school system. Right. And if we're not paying attention, we'll see more of them go that way. So what I'm, it, in my research, there are two of the institutions in our society that has kept blacks in an inferior position, black Americans, uh, and whites in a, in a superior position. See, you don't see very many blacks working with each other to deal with the issues that you and, and Glenora were talking about mm -hmm. a while ago. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you got to be willing to stand out and put forth the position from your own community. If the education system isn't helping us understand how citizenship plays a, 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 a crucial role in what we're trying to do, to make society better, we will always lose. Mm -hmm. See, people are going on thinking that it's not important for blacks to look at themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, I just out there listen to a guy tell me uh, the Iranians are looking at the new, I think the New Year's is going on, they're having a mm -hmm. little situation going. But the point of it, is people can accept those individuals saying that, but for, for as black Americans are concerned, people are afraid to let black Americans do what they ought to be doing for themselves in terms of open up. The key things is, you know, growing up in Texas, we had a, well, I went to one of those schools that everybody, did, with, all the teachers saw their success in the children's success. And they taught us some of the things that we necessarily need to know about our history, how we can get some things done. And one of the things that I've tried to share with the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs is to help people understand, that, to learn, understand, and use politics and process. Mm -hmm. See, it's one thing to say there's a problem out there, but if we're not willing to tell people what the problem from our community, we won't get no results. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons we hold the, uh, the Oregon Black Political Convention. That's one yeah. of the reasons we have that, in order to let people know that uh, we are willing to share what is happening mm -hmm. to us mm -hmm. along that line. Mm -hmm. So I think the education process and the justice process in our society, or institutions in our society, have been the ones that we got to change 
very drastically. Mm -hmm. They're part of the problem, but they also they got to be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. Well, that's again that's why I started off the way I did. I think I think uh, what you do is a very important yeah. important piece. Uh, of, as far as the total community yes. and the state is concerned, like I said, Martin Luther King Day is a good day, but yeah. that's one day, okay? Yeah. And, and But this situation is a very important one, and that's another reason why I did Glendora, because again, like you said, she's a member of the organization, and if you notice that uh, she's, she's running for a commission seat, uh, and, and again, she's going to be the probably one of the most prominent persons to being able to talk about mental health, same thing. And, and uh, that, that's a very major piece. And it just so happened to be a person like her and her statute. Very important. And, 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 and again, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. But still, with reference to what you're doing, you, you know, um, now let's talk a little bit more about the convention. What's some of the activities you have at the, at the convention? Well, and, well, and why do you have them? Well, we have a Friday night activity that we're dealing with youth. The youth, we're, okay. We're, we're trying to get the youth to be able to facilitate uh, discussion with candidates and with people who come in to, to deal with What that. kind of discussions? Or just in general? Well, 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 they look at uh, what their campaigns may be, and how they can get involved with it, and what some of the issues they want to see uh, the convention uh, uh, adopt as resolutions. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the big things that we try to do with the on Friday night activity. This is, this is what we call our youth, the youth the involvement okay, okay. a little bit. And then we got we're putting forth a draft platform dealing with a lot of issues, mm -hmm. some national issues as well as some state issues and local issues. What would what if I were to ask you what one issue that you think that sort of stands out this time around that you will be discussing? What would be that issue? Well, we're going to be discussing right state. What well, well, state sanction discrimination is one of the big issues that we state sanction discrimination. discrimination. Define that's where, that. Define that's that. where that the, that uh, where the laws uh, and the actions of the uh, uh, from the state sort of uh, and how they operate, uh, how people operate along those lines to to keep people from progressing. Are they still on the books? Well, yeah, yes. Sometimes uh, you, you may see a law on the book that seems to give equity in the situation, but how it's implemented. It's not that way. Give us an example. Well, look. Uh, the one you've got now that you're going to be discussing. Well, one of the big issues that we're dealing with right now is, uh, uh, in terms of discussion, is how uh, the Republican Party mm -hmm. is trying to prevent the President of the United States from doing his constitutional duty mm -hmm. to, point a, okay, to point a Supreme Court replacement. Okay. That is a big issue. It almost says to, when people look at it and begin to look at how people have evaluated this president since he's been in, it's almost saying all those actions that many of the Republicans have done, have played, are, are, are really signs of overthrowing the Constitution of the United States. Mm -hmm. That's a big issue, man. Mm -hmm. Now, not very many people want to talk about this. And some people said to me, you better be careful, Calvin. I even got a call from somebody in in, uh, in England, uh, tell me, mm -hmm. watch out, somebody may... Really? Oh, yes. But, really? But, but, my, but, I, yeah, but let, me, let, me throw, <laughs> let me throw this on the table. Now, if the person, two things. One, if the person was white, if, if we had another white president, or if the person was a Democrat, would we have done the same thing? No. Okay, it would have been just politics, right? But, uh, no, no it, 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 it wouldn't be just politics. It would be, be how people are looking at things as they have come from the genesis of the Constitution okay. of the United okay. States. If you remember, the Constitution of the United States said pretty much that you and I was three-fifths. Mm -hmm. Now, women didn't have a voice, mm -hmm. and they were treated pretty much like chattel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in many ways. Until when we got the voice, people start sh trying to shut us down. Mm -hmm. But but the, the preamble talked about who was going to do all those things that we want to see happen to move the society. Mm -hmm. But they also thought of it, if you take back to that period of time, only white males would be making the decision. Mm -hmm. I, I want people to think about that. Okay, but that, that was that. Was that. That's, that that's uh, part of our history. Yes, 
Okay. And, and, to, and how, when people said, let's go back to those days, what yeah. are they saying? They want me to go, and you go back to slave. We want women to have no voice at all. But that's not going to happen. I, I, we know it's not going to happen. So, but, but but we see rudiments of that. Okay, okay. Well, and, that's not going to ever go away. Rudiments. The word but, rudiments. But, I don't know what your word rudiments is, but, <laughs> but I understand. What but you're but you see examples of that, and when you see what is happening with regard to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. this campaign. So you're saying that the whole issue of race, because of it, because it, uh, it, he's an African American president, which I was first, right? You agree? Yeah. It, it's not. It wasn't going to be a situation where he was going to be uh, the president, and then all of a sudden everything else was being forgotten. That that's not the case. No. That was our first time, right? Yeah. Okay. 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 And See. and 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 the point of it, we need to understand and know how to talk about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's what we're doing now. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and that, and that's part. Of, that's part of what you do. Uh, yeah. What you're going to be doing, and yeah. that's why we want to do this, to, so people understand when the when the issue comes to the table to talk about the issue, that. This yeah, is what we're going to be talking yeah, about. And, Anybody can talk. Yeah, and, and, share their thoughts and their feelings about it, right? Right. And, and, and yes. Good. And, and take the issue of health care. Mm -hmm. People think that we need to blame the president alone. Health care is a function of the state. They want to, they want to do that because of the Tenth Amendment, but they're not doing it. The governors are causing a lot of pain for citizens of this country. Well, look, I'm a great look. Huh? I'm saying to you. You know, it was, it's not as if uh, uh, President Obama is the fifth African American president. No, no, this is the first. You know I, what I'm saying? I understand. And race that. was a major, major issue, and we I, still haven't put it into the schools yet, because it's part of our history. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, just being upfront, uh, it's not in the school system yet. It's not being discussed, right? And we're still having problems. Well, we, we got a rich history in many, in many ways, yes. but we got this other thing that sticks out like a sore thumb, yeah. and that's the div division between the races aspect of it. Yeah, but, but see, what I'm saying, uh, all of this is embedded in trying to stop black Americans from progressing to the point that we are on equal footing all the way around. Oh, okay, okay. I, I uh, so, so when you begin to look at it, take Oregon, for instance. Oregon was willing to punish, punish white people when they brought blacks in this state. Yeah, from a historical standpoint. Uh, yeah, but also... They don't do it today. Not in a way you think they don't do it, or most people don't think they'll do it. Sometimes it's how people get the opportunity to be able to succeed one way or another. See, uh, people sh shut people down if you make the wrong decision yeah. about things in all these facets. Mm -hmm. now, what, what we try to do is get people to think about what is yeah. really going yeah, yeah, on yeah. and begin to look at it. When you see it, talk about it. And don't be afraid to expose it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it, it see, a lot of us and a lot of whites are afraid to expose it. Mm -hmm. But some. Yeah, but yeah, some. Like, I, yeah, I, some. I, I, yeah. I, I, never I, say a lot. Just say uh, some. Uh, what, what you, some is less you know, than the lot. No, I mean, don't get me wrong. A lot of times people don't say nothing. You say, well, they should get involved, what? but they don't. They just kind of get on the no, sideline no, no. and say nothing. If people said what they would, you know, say, look, that's wrong. I mean, if the majority said it was wrong, we wouldn't be having this. Like I, I, said, agree, I agree. With you. I, well, and, that, and I know that's one of the points you're trying to get to the point well, where the, the well, lot would say, the lot of well, would well, say, well, I don't like that. Now, right? now, bear in mind what you just tried to do to me. You tried to change my meaning. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, by no mean, no, no. By, by the use of the term. No, 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 no. Now, no, I'm, no. Just, I'm just sharing with you. What you're saying, yeah. I, I, what you think, saying, I, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. sometimes we have to let people understand I the richness of how get, we use the words, too. Yeah, but I want them to get to the table. <laughs> see, see, I, I want them too. to get to the table so they can have the discussion. Because if, if someone is constantly beating you, I mean, I say that's really, that the lot part, if they're saying, no, no, well, no, the excuse is that you don't like me either, and I'm saying, I understand what you're saying, but if you say I'm part of the whole process, I'm not going to go. No, you see no, what I'm saying? No, but the point of it, uh, uh, Bruce, go on. This is good. When, when you try to uh, diminish uh, what has been said by somebody, it says to the others th that he's trying to make it more compatible, um, more appropriate for me. Oh, no. No, 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 no but, but sometimes not... sometime we, ha well, so we have... But, that, but that's an opinion you have, and, and I, I'm just sharing with I, you. I, I, I know. We're having the discussion, which is good, but let the folks know 
that, that, that is Bruce still the bottom Bruce, line. But the bottom line is still we're going to have the discussion yeah, at, the at, the convention, at the convention, right? Which is very important. But yeah, because we and, want folks to go and, and, and have we, this discussion, and, we, and, we're going and to they'll have the freedom to serve us on their mind, and then you just go back and forth, back and forth, and say, okay, at the end of the day, we're supposed to be all together. Yeah. Fair? It, and we're going to talk and about... And you're going to be monitoring that whole piece, yeah. anyway. Uh, well, we got people... And I'll be there looking at it, too. Yeah. <laughs> but we also got uh, people going to be looking at what is going on in the justice system. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. See, that's a big problem here yeah, in yeah. in Portland. Uh, 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 and, you know, when you find that the police department or the in Portland uh, is can see all the records of, of young black... Oh, yeah, everybody. Well, I understand that. But I know, but black, you're talking about I, 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 black affairs. I, I, I'm, I understand. I'm coming, I'm coming from the standpoint of yes. people that look like me. Bro. Right, I understand. I understand. See, I understand. When, I, when I talk about every, I, what I say, uh, what, what benefit black American benefit all Americans. Yeah, uh, right, all right. are going Right, in. there you go. Uh, see, I but, you. but I have to we come just, from. I understand that. But I have to come from the strength that I can show. Well, that's what you are, Oregon. Yeah. Assembly of Black for, for Black Affairs. Yeah, yeah, but I'm There's trying no to. With that. I, 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 that. I'm trying to get you to see that we don't have to cush, uh, be cautioned in our words. No, we're not. And to come from our community to express I mean, it. I mean, I mean, now, I mean. now, now, but we have to be in positions to be able to articulate what that community is, uh, what our community is saying. You know, your thought about the idea of law enforcement and police work and this, that, and the other. Hopefully, you know, this is a, like I said, I'm running for mayor and then running for the city of Portland, the largest city in the state of Oregon. We are fortunate to have uh, the, uh, probably one of the very, very few uh, black presidents of a union in the state, in, in the country. His name is Daryl Turner. Yeah. And I would hope that you will have him as part of the discussion when you tell you, well, you well, have you invited well, him to maybe no, come well, to that well, discussion? Everybody's invited. No, but I'm just no. I'm no, talking no, about no, black no, folks now. No, I'm talking about black. All, all the he's, black folks. He's, he's the president of the largest police force in the state, and he's an African American. Well, well, and it, and I, I know the guy, and, and right up front with you, I think he would love that discussion. You think you well, get him in there? Well, the point, <laughs> the, the point of it is. I'll have you here with him. That's what we do. No, no, but see, the, you see, you look at. The, the delegates are the are the people who who speaks to the issue. The delegates. Yes, they're the one at this convention speak to the issue. Okay, but what about when you have this panel discussion? Are you going to have what, what, anybody representing the law? No, no. The, I said the delegates are the are the. Oh, oh, how can he become a delegate? He can register. Oh, well, 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 we got to get him on there. Give uh, me a registration. Uh, <laughs> I will call him. Okay, you, we'll call him. Tell him he ought to register. Are you going to have a discussion <laughs> on this but, issue? Well, the, there'll be issues on police uh, situation. No, but, but can, it, it, will it, there be a, a discussion and he'll be able to be on the panel uh, or whatever? Uh, there, or there, at the no, table? no, no. You see, you, you're talking about something entirely different. There come a time that we will have... Like I got some, about a minute. Go, go, keep going. Th yeah. There come a time when we will okay. have those kind of uh, situations. But this is one that's getting blacks to understand how to participate in politics and okay, okay. conventions and whatnot. That's, that's what we're doing. See, you, you're looking to see whether we can have a, a panel of discussion on something, and that's a whole different okay, ballgame. Okay, Well, that's good. Well, look, we don't have but a few more seconds, but you're going to be coming on here before. Real yeah. quick, that date, real quick, was April 9th. April the 22nd, 22nd. To, the, to the 24th. Okay, good. You're going to be back here anyway before yes. before we do this again. Okay, so let me make one week. other quick Real quick, because i got about 30 okay. seconds. Real quick. we got about eight people who are running for office in the state of Oregon. Okay. And hopefully they will begin to share with them their perspective. Okay, good. And then you got a website too, right? you got a real quick website, right? Yeah, yes, it's oaba.us. There you go, good. Uh, Cal, this is always a pleasure. And I will definitely be there. Okay. And you're going to be back here. What? What? What day? We'll be, we'll be, next uh, Sunday. Next week. Next week we're probably. Next week. Be that's Easter Sunday. So we can talk a little bit about uh, you Easter. Got Easter. Okay. Yeah, we're, going to, we're going to be here. We're yeah. going to be here. Thanks again for being here. And okay. thank you for inviting me. Yeah. I'll thank see you, you next week. Yeah. All right. See you next week, folks. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Like I said, make, make sure you registered to vote. You got to vote next time around. As I indicated before, there are two options you have. You either can vote or you can run for office. Run for office is gone now. So all you can do is vote. Okay, take care. Have a good evening. I'll see you next week.